what I found is that what makes a man successful is not how little he fails or how much he does right. It's not even how many times he gets back up, okay, which is important, but it's Let me give you the example that we all know. You are on a diet. It's going good. Oh, you're doing great. You're just following the diet perfectly. You're going to the gym, you're working out, you're losing weight, the pounds are coming off. You can see that six pack is somewhere under there. It's gonna be coming out. If you can just hold on to this for another four weeks. Birthday party comes along. Hmm, someone's having chocolate cake. Oh, I better not have the chocolate cake. Well, I guess I could just have one slice. I mean, it is Joe's birthday. I have been doing good on my diet. Holy shit, as I'm in a tub full of potato chips and I'm drinking Pepsi by the gallon. What the f happened? I just gained 20 pounds in the last week and a half. Stop going to the gym, stop working out. I just gained all the weight that I lost over the last three months and I did it in a week and a half. Why does this happen? It happens because of two reasons. One of them is that we will inevitably fail. We will weaken. We cannot be 100% strong all the time. You are going to f up. People who do not plan for up, when they do up, they up big. And you've seen them destroy their entire lives. Sometimes these people live these very pious lives. They pretend to be something that they're not. And then when they have a drink, they are an alcoholic and they destroy their entire life. You've seen this before. So that's number one, is because you're going to fail. Number two, and this is the most important part here, is because the time between falling down and getting back up, because you eventually get up, again, most of us, allowed enough time to destroy a lot of things. It's like this. When you f up, when you fail, when you're falling, it's like your house is on fire. You've lit your house on fire. And the longer that you stay down and don't get back up, that is the longer that that fire is burning. And if you let that fire keep burning, it is going to become a blaze and it's gonna consume your entire house. So if you accidentally started a fire in your house, when would be the best time to extinguish that? Would it be immediately? Or would it be later on? After it burns for a little bit. Ah, I'm too lazy right now, I don't feel like it. Let's let it burn. The fire's already started, so I might as well just let it burn for the rest of the day. I'll have a new day tomorrow with no fire, no. You need to get it done now. You need to extinguish that flame now. It's easier to destroy than it is to create. I want you to say that, repeat that. It's easier to destroy than it is to create. And if you understand this principle, it influences all of your thinking and all of the processes that you have for making decisions. If you're deciding if you're going to embark upon some mission or create something, you have to realize that you're in for the long haul. You also have to realize whatever you create can be destroyed easily and you have to safeguard against that destruction. And it also is one of those things that when you're thinking about decisions that you make in life and you're thinking about a destructive decision, you have to realize that to recreate what you're going to destroy is going to take you a lot longer than it's going to take you to destroy it. What I would attribute most of my success in life to is how I've handled those situations, not the, actually the things that I've done right and that I've been successful off the bat, but how I've handled the setbacks that inevitably come. Because what I found is that what makes a man successful is not how little he fails or how much he does right. It's not even how many times he gets back up okay which is important but it's how quickly he gets back up so how much do the setbacks set you back one time i was on a diet and i broke down on my diet i went to mcdonald's i said i want a big mac meal supersize me got the big mac meal sat down had my big mac i'm like all right well you know whatever i take the big mac i take a bite out of it in my head as i have that bite that i'm chewing in my mouth I think you're f***ing up, John. The old me would have ate that and then said, well, f*** it, you f***ed up your diet for today, so let's go and order some cheesecake and just party tonight and tomorrow we'll restart. No, it's f***ing wrong, why? Why do you guys do that? Why do we do that? Why did I do that? You know what I did? I spit it out, I threw it away. As soon as you know you're on the wrong path, just f***ing turn around. You use your Google Maps, right? Sometimes I do the walking directions and I don't know what direction it is. I always pick the wrong one, it's a 50-50 chance. I don't just keep on going the wrong direction. When I see I'm getting further away, I turn around. It's so foolish to keep on going because you're already on a path. The moment you know you did something wrong, turn around. And I'll tell you, as far as successful people in life, 
It's not the person who has the most wins. We all get wins. It's the person who gets on the horse the fastest, gets back up the fastest. You're gonna f up. No matter what you do in life, you will fail. You will not be perfect. But the people that succeed in life are the ones who get up and get going again as fast as possible. It takes years, how many man hours and how many millions and millions of dollars to build a skyscraper. It takes five minutes to destroy it with a wrecking ball or explosives. Everything in life is like that. And again, this is easier said than done. This is a very difficult skill to develop because it is in our nature that when we f up, that we want to fly off the rails and we want to eat everything in sight, that we want to skip the gym another day because we skipped it one day, that we want to be lazy and procrastinate because we wasted half the day, so we might as well waste the other f***ing half. How many times have you done this shit? This is how most people live their lives. Look how good they're doing. Damn, they're doing good. F***ed up, okay? Look how much climbing. Damn, f***ed up. Climbing, this is great. This is a lot of effort to do this, but these don't matter when this is here. So what you're trying to do, a lot of you, you're trying to do this. You're like, oh, if I can just make this steeper and that's burning you out. It doesn't matter. It's steep enough. Just above average work is fine. As long as you control this, focus on this, the down, stop the down. If you stop the down, you can add these up. You can be at a lower curve and this is still better, right? Because if your down is just like this, Look at this. You're, you're going to be beating out very quickly where you were before. That's the thing. It's how to deal with failure. It's how to deal with f***ing up. Because this is where you mess up your life. This is why you're not successful. It's not because you're not smart enough. It's not because you don't work hard enough. It's because one, you haven't anticipated that you will screw up. You believe that you're not going to. You believe that you must be perfect. And two, you haven't pre-anticipated what will happen and what you will do when you screw up. See, I screw up all the time. People think I have the willpower of a god. I do not. I f*** up. But what I'm really good at is getting back on the horse very, very quickly, so quickly that some people don't even notice because I've up in my head, but before I've actually taken an action, I've already corrected it. That's a skill. If you can develop this one skill, if you can make it so that when you up, you get back on track as quickly as possible, then you can be fearless. You can up as much as you want because those ups will be little blips. It doesn't matter because you don't stay down for very long. You get right back up the next day or before the next day immediately.